when it was terrified fires. fire. Was, uh, Your fire department might have been a bucket brigade. <laughs> Everybody form a line. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> it was built by George Coleman. He wow. made his fortune in lead and zinc mining in the area. This Everybody was the largest lead and zinc pit in the world. Wow. The Commerce, Oklahoma, all the way to Grand Bay down from Missouri. Over 50% uh, was supplied to the war effort in World War I and World War II just in this area. And led to the war material. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. So even during the Great Depression, this place didn't suffer. Yeah. A couple of witnesses today, you can find a war or something. Zinc went into plating on battleships, submarines, gun barrels, and aircraft to waterproof them and rustproof them. And then also just you know, that whole thing. <laughs> well, that seems to be a positive thing. But with his fortune, uh, he married a sweet young thing that has his name. And they started traveling. <laughs> and Uncle Smith, the last one. Oh, really? 1820s. And, you know, wow. And he fell in love with Vaudeville. So, and so we approached uh, Keith Alby and Orpheum, told them they want to get on the circuit. They said, well, we book out of here to the fence. That'd be done in a year. Better be grand, better be opulent. And they finished this thing in 330 days. Bowler Brothers out of camp. They, they built like 140 theaters all across the Midwest and North and South. Very good, very accomplished. Well, rumor has it, you know, that I'll tell you, craftsmen did all the boat work. And that was the guy's name. Come on in. I'll tell you what, uh, you won't get the ambiance that you did last night compared to this place. This is, this is a step back in time right here. Yeah, it is. You guys need to come down here and watch the show someday. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that bad of a trip off from Wichita. So no. I'd like to get my in-laws in here too because they love this kind of stuff. Did you guys come down and then hit 166? Mm, no. Uh-uh. We were through 400 east and then some back Oh, through roads. Andover and Augusta and then, then cut back south? Yeah. And mm -hmm. It was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting road. We're used to like, you know, six lanes, you know, and you go to like two lane. Like, oh. You get a I love that. Now, is that original or is that a wow. Organ's original? One of only, I think, 16 back in its original location. And if ACDC came in with their big Yamaha, and some girl could match up. <laughs> Got over 2,000 sounds. Got a complete brass. Come here, look. See the brass section? Oh, yeah. There's actually four drums up there. Xylophone. Mm -hmm. uh, triangle. Telephone ringing. I've heard it can make a sound like dog barking too. They had to have all that for the silent theater. movies and vaudeville. Yeah. You know? Oh my gosh. It was like, you know, how they do it in the cartoons now. They make the sound effects and people are over mm -hmm. there doing stuff. It's, they had to do that at well, See, one of our <laughs> acts that we do, uh, we book him three times a year. He's a world renowned, renowned organist out of New York. Mm -hmm. And somehow this guy got rights to most of the old silent movies. There's only about 10% of the library left. And he got the rights to it. And he travels the country to a venue like this. 
and you come in and get seated, he does a small concert, and then goes to the microphone and engages with the audience, you know, tells them history of the movie and, you know, what was going on back during that time, plays some trivia with you, um, and then they air the movie and he plays all the background music too. We've actually got a double uh, double feature with Harold Lloyd coming up in March. Really? And a lot of people like Harold Lloyd better than Charlie Chaplin. They thought he was funnier. Really? Oh my gosh. That is awesome. I'd like to look up and see. Because it would be nice. I'll give you some it. info before you like it. Okay. Because, yeah, that would be nice to come to a show. Well, we won't break your piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> Nice ticket I've seen here is twenty five bucks. The Hotel Health. California got twenty five dollars. Yeah. So what did you guys pay last night? Twenty. 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 But yeah, it was, and it, it was for who now? Ty Herndon. Ty Herndon. Yeah. It was general admission though. You had. Now is he a guy that? Because uh, I, I kind of lost track of who's big. I mean, is he up and comer or? He, no. No, <laughs> he's been around since nineteen nineties. Okay. Big. He was a. Uh, what did you say he was in a uh, show in 1985, we said? Or 1984? Um, Star Search. Star Search. Yeah. He was second so you, Did you guys see their big outdoor amphitheater? No. No, uh uh. See, that's who they used for, like Rascal Flats and uh, Miranda Lambert. Oh, really? I'm glad well, it wasn't see, outdoors. Uh, <laughs> well, generally, they have it in the summertime, and you stand out there in 100 degree heat, you know. <laughs> you know <laughs> They bought these fields, and uh, when Rascal Flats appeared there, I think they paid them a half million. That's when they were just, you know, they were starting to hit the top of the charts. Wow. And they tried to book them again, they won the million this time. Oh, wow. Hedged on that. You got, uh, you got too big for the riches, huh? Yeah. Like, nope, we want more now. <laughs> it actually where it was. They wanted Garth Brooks to open for them. Garth Brooks had to <laughs> open them for them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Second teamer, not me. <laughs> yeah, we actually went where Garth Brooks was signed in Tennessee and a little, you know, Bluebird, Bluebird Cafe, Cafe, where they actually pulled him aside and had him sign a contract right there in the kitchen. Pretty cool. We like this kind of stuff. Where it's There's an history. old dive in Tulsa called the Canes Ballroom. Uh -huh. And every up and comer in Oklahoma has played there. Really? They, Garth Brooks, Toby Keith, Reba McIntyre, Carrie Underwood, Trish Yearwood just played there. Now, when you go in there, they bring you a folding chair. Yeah. It's kind of how Bird was. But it's, Blake Shelton, I mean, the list is on and on. Wow. The people that, you know, that's where they started, cut their teeth. Woody mm -hmm. Arlo Guthrie. It's just a no dive. Yeah. But those yeah. are, you know, yeah. those are places people get mm -hmm. seen. That's neat. Oh my gosh. Mo knocking on Curly's head? Yeah! <laughs> This is Dennis Jacob.
see the square doors up there. Yeah. That's so cool. Original 29, hand painted canvas backdrop. That's original? Mm -hmm. Well, you get behind it and see daylight through it. What? <laughs> yeah, it's very original. Oh very God, delicate. That's so old. And it still looks so good. I mean, that's about 100 years old. It's not bad. Not bad. Come on back here. coming in this weekend to play. That's cool. He's played for President the Mountain Native. Oh, good night. I keep track of all this. This would have been a busy place back in the day. Wow. Very Jeez. busy place. These are all the lights? Just lights or? Yeah, they actually control all these light bars. Uh, third generation electrician in town, his grandfather, was in on the original wiring. And the old man left the blueprints back. So Danny, the grandson, was able to go back into this thing and make it functional again. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> That's lucky yeah. that he found the blueprints. That's great. Wow. All yeah, the original this, rigging. I'm going to take it forever to try to Counter light on a brain. A 10-year-old kid, once you release that brake, the counterweights on it can raise or lower about anything we've got. Out of dates on electric coils, you know. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Just the hands you had to have just to put it all work. Said it would be fun to get in a time machine and come back for a big night here. This was a busy place on the weekends. They ran two vaudeville shows during the day. And at 11 o'clock at night, they dropped screen shows out of nowhere. So it's kind of like an all day affair. Wow. Come to the Coleman Theater back in the day. That's the big thing. I mean, that was your entertainment. Mm -hmm. And this was, place was air conditioning. It was air conditioning? What? But not conventionally. Okay, I was going to say, what? When you guys were on the sidewalk getting ready to come in, the, you were on top of the basement. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look up at the roof of the Coleman, you'll see grill work up there on that curved OG. Yeah. And there were actually fans that pulled air out of the theater and took them down to the basement and blew the air over frozen bales of straw. Now the bottom floor had a recess area of it and it had fans that pulled air underneath the floor and there were vents up there that would just complete that circle, you know. How often did they have to replace that straw? I don't know, but it was, it was effective. ingenious. Yeah. Because it would hold the, hold the coat a lot longer, you know, the straws would store. Yeah. Nice. You don't come be insulated and it would hold it a lot longer. Recycle. Oh, <laughs> come on back right here. You look at this thing, you see how Was he ever here? 31. Wow. On a drought relief tour for uh, Oklahoma, nice. Arkansas, Drunk. <laughs> and uh, Texas. It was wrong my arm, but it wasn't. Yeah, a true story about that. You know, he's big into flying. That's what cost him his life. Mm -hmm. But uh, his popularity was through the sailing. He was writing columns for the New York Times at that time. High speed actor in Hollywood. And so we got in a plane to head down here. Now the whole four state area was at the airport waiting on him. Well they had plane trouble and they had to sit down over by Afton, Oklahoma, a little farming community. Yeah. Got out of the plane, started hitchhiking in, the farmer picked him up and brought him into Cohen. 
Well, nobody was here because they were all at the airport waiting on him. So when they found out, they all busted it into town. When they got here, they found him across the street on his hands and knees with two kids shooting marbles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was down to earth. Okay, I mean. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, people that fame doesn't, I mean, it's always going to touch them a little bit, but yeah, if they still stay down to earth, it makes it so much better yeah. for them in general, because they don't get all caught up in all that, go ahead and some glamour. Good looking guy. <laughs> I always like those black and white pictures. Bring those back more. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, that's neat. Do you want to go down to the green room? Sure. Sure. Yeah, there's the other ones. So you see the other dressing rooms? For multiple. It's cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, my gosh. I wonder why they always made these green. The green room. You don't know the story yeah. behind that, huh? No. I don't, I don't know it. I always thought, now I'm a retired school teacher, and we had in services before we got the kids back. I always thought green had something to do with your, uh, a calming felt mm -hmm. on your um, psyche. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I was all wrong. Yeah. Green actually acclimates your eyes to the spotlights when you step out on stage and don't blind you. Oh, it's oh. like a green screen light. Or a, yeah, I never even thought about that. So when you watch Johnny Carson or Jay Leno, they're back in the green room getting ready to come on. Wow. So it doesn't, they can actually concentrate. The lights oh. don't bother them. Well, oh. Of course, I've seen Johnny Carson trip on the curtain, trip over going to his desk. Of course, we don't know if he's in Ed McMahon's whiskey bottle, though, either. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I never even thought about that. Yeah, green, I've never, I've never considered that a calming. <laughs> but it makes sense for the whites, definitely. Hmm. Like those totes and tans. I thought you think about summertime. You've got sunshine, but you've got all the green trees and everything. That's true. So. Yeah, that's... Wow, that's really cool. Now are these, like these, this furniture is like stuff that you guys have collected? Most of it's been donated out of our homes. Because we don't know what was in here in the beginning. I mean, probably so many things have disappeared out here, it's been unreal. Oh, yeah. All your posters of your attractions and Coming attractions was hand painted back in the day. If they had a storage room, you know, where they had some of those old ones with Sally Rand or Will Rogers, I'm telling you, know, you went on the Antiques Road Channel, I'll tell them what they'd buy. Depending on, you know, how much money some old boy wanted to part with watching the program that day, wanted how much he wanted to part with. Yeah. <laughs> how bad he wanted it. That's cool. That's nice, then, yeah. People donated. The older furniture. That looks really good. Yeah, it does. That's awesome. You're not quite me. There you go. You get to see a lot of shows having been. Mm -hmm. This would be my father in law's dream right here. <laughs> Do you ought to burn him then? <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to. And my mom, because she would love to just. The little gambling, stay on eye. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they were much gamblers, but <laughs> they definitely like shows.
he used to own a theater in El Dorado, Kansas, and did live shows and, and a dinner theater. We do dinners on stage here. Do you really? Dinner and movies sometimes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he loved that. He was very, he's a very funny guy. He can get up there and do comedy and introduce people. Nice. Doesn't do it much anymore, but. I bet he'd like to do this place. Like high school and stuff like that. A couple from Texas <clears throat> early this morning, over a couple. And she had taught theater in school and had acted in local theater productions, you know, all her life. I turned that organ on, she started crying. Oh my gosh. I bet our mom might do that too. <laughs> yeah, that thing is something. Marble. Not ocean safe anymore. No. <laughs> you, know, you remember the water you squirt straight up? Well, if yeah. you drip back down the well, if you had dysentery or flu, everybody behind you is going to get a dose of what you know. mm. We can't go in, but we can peek. Okay. We're setting up for an event. Uh, that's fine. They say something about the hospital that's having an event? That's cool. That's uh, David Osborne, the pianist that plays the Bellagio. Oh, okay. He's coming in and doing an event event. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I saw the, your guys' hospital over here. It's pretty small. Well, compared to what I thought that would be. It's cute. I like it. I might need to go to a smaller hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the way things are going this last couple months. Break. <laughs> there we go. She's gotta stand by the door, Lisa. Okay. Mess up this Nice. Oh, look at that floor. Was that restored too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this was just finished in 2012. He was going to do this when Vaudeville crashed. He let it go. Um, and so when the city and the Princess Coleman got to looking at this, they thought, why not go ahead and finish what he was going to do? Yeah. And actually, this thing's a big helper. You know, this theater doesn't make money, but this helps a lot. Because we've got like three or four high school proms booked this spring. People get rent the whole thing, get married on stage, have a reception up here, business meetings, That's the nice. benefit, you know. So yeah, it helps. does. It helps us out a lot. It looks Vacation or? Uh, I get Tuesday, Wednesday off from my my days off. Yeah, and I get Wednesdays. I took Tuesday off. I don't normally have Tuesdays off. What do you got to do? 
I'm an ER trauma nurse over at ER, or Wichita. My wife is. Really? Yeah, I <laughs> oh, that's cool. You got, I hear stories all the time. Oh, yeah. There, there's some Confidential. crazy stuff. Confidential. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs>